Hello, my name is Alec Kolila and I am an LGG Fellow at Mayo Clinic. I'm excited to share with you results from a three-year retrospective study looking at those with IMP21 BALL. I have no conflicts to disclose, however, I do want to acknowledge that this project was presented in an earlier conference, but we have added some additional data. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia is the most common cancer affecting children with an annual incidence of 35 per 1 million for children ages 0 to 14. Although we know that a large majority of ALL occurs in children, it also occurs in adults. The American Cancer Society reports that about 80% of deaths from ALL, ALL are in adults. They also report that in 2021, it is estimated that there will be 5,600 new cases in the U.S. and over 1,500 individuals will succumb to the disease. As you all know, there is a system of classification for BALO, which includes those with recurrent genetic abnormalities, one of them being intrachromosomal amplification of chromosome 21, or IMP21. It is important to know which genetic abnormality is the primary abnormality as it helps in risk determination, guides therapy, and predicted prognosis. IMP21 arises when there are three or more extra copies of RUNX1 on a single abnormal chromosome 21. The commonly amplified region in IMP21 patients always includes the RUNX1 gene. Therefore, fish probes directed to RUNX1 are currently used as a most reliable detection method. RUNX1 is 260 kilobases in length and is located on chromosome 21, Q22.1, which is represented by the solid red line on chromosome 21 to the right of the slide. Individuals with IMP21 account for only 2% of BALL. It most commonly occurs in older pediatric patients with a median age of 9 to 11 years. A study from 2013 showed that when these patients are treated on standard therapy, they have worse outcomes. In that same year, Mormon et al. showed that IMP21 individuals treated on a high-risk therapy had a lower risk of relapse. Normal chromosome 21 in IMP21 arises from a mechanism called breakage fusion bridge, which is a mechanism of genomic instability that occurs during anaphase as a result of telomere loss, dicentric chromosome formation, and mechanical and physical mitotic spindle stress. When there is loss of telomeres, the sister chromatids fuse with one another, creating a bridge. The centromeres of each sister chromatid are pulled in opposite directions, causing them to break apart but not at necessarily at the site of fusion, leading to abnormal chromatids. The process continues as the cell divides until the chromatids receive a telomere from a translocation. In the event of IMP21, the dicentric chromosome 21 becomes prone to chromocrypsis, which is a process by which up to hundreds of rearrangements can occur in a single event. This brings me to the purpose of our study, which was to characterize atypical IMP21 cases and assess how well the RUNX1 fish probe performs in identifying these cases. We hypothesize that the RUNX1 fish probe set will not characterize all IMP21 cases. The first step in this process was to identify the frequency of IMP21 in our time period of all pediatric BALL that had fish and chromosomes and who had also clinical trial enrollment. Then using the definition of IMP21, we identified those that were considered atypical IMP21 or did not meet this definition by fish. Finally, we perform mate pair sequencing on most of the atypical IMP21 to further characterize the complex genomic rearrangements in these cases. The first step was to identify the frequency of IMP21 in our cohort. We had over 770 patients within our three-year time period. 30% of our patients had a primary abnormality of hyperdiploidy, followed by 23% that were characterized as not otherwise specified. We also had close to 20% 20, 20 that had ETV6 RUNX1 fusion. You will also notice that we had 4% of patients with an IMP21 primary abnormality. We compared the frequencies of the genetic abnormalities listed in the WHO classification between our laboratory for this time period and a paper by Claire Schwab and Christine Harrison from 2018. We identified that generally our frequencies align with what is published. However, due to the nature of our lab being a reference lab, we had a slightly higher value for IMP21. Within the not otherwise specified category, we have the following genetic abnormalities. Of the 23% not otherwise specified, we could not identify a primary abnormality in 85%. The next step in the process was to take a closer look at the cases that did not fit the definition for IMP21. Those that did not fit, meet the definition but had the amplification confirmed by microarray were classified as atypical IMP21. 79% of cases met the definition and 21% did not. The ratio of males to females was slightly higher towards male in the typical group and the median age was 12. Of our atypical cases, there was a one to six male to female ratio and a median age of 10. 
We then looked at the number of RUNX1 signals for each group. Although the median number of RUNX1 signals isn't that different between the two groups, the distribution of the signals is statistically different. Next, I will show some of the data from three of our seven atypical cases. The first patient was a five-year-old female. Banded analysis of an available metaphase revealed a constitutional 21-22 Robertsonian translocation. In addition, we observed two ring chromosomes of undetermined origin. Sequential fish analysis on one abnormal metaphase demonstrated the presence of RUNX1 in multiple locations, including one chromosome 18 and the derivative 21-22, one chromosome 22, and one ring chromosome. In this case, sequential fish analysis did not demonstrate three or more RUNX1 RUNX signals on any single chromosome 21. Chromosomal microarray was performed and revealed additional copies of most of chromosome 21, together with numerous relative losses representing chromothripsis of chromosome 21. Chromosome 18 and 22, although not shown, look normal under microarray. This case demonstrated something unexpected, which is that the RUNX1 was on other chromosomes besides 21. This case also reminded us that those with a constitutional 1521 Robertsonian translocation are at 2,700 increased risk of developing INP21 as shown by Yi Long Lee and Christine Harrison in 2014. The presence of a constitutional 2122 Robertsonian translocation in this patient, along with INP21, begs the question, could other Robertsonian translocations put individuals at risk of INP21? Mate pair sequencing results for this case are striking. Here you're seeing a circus plot and you can appreciate that there are multi multiple complex rearrangements occurring on chromosome 21, including more than 50 junctions, and that this particular IMP21 result is far more complex than we would see for a typical IMP21 case. The next case is of an eight-year-old female with multiple clonal populations. In this karyogram, you can see a deletion of chromosome 11 and a derivative chromosome 9 that underwent to translocation with the region from chromosome 11 and an abnormal chromosome 21. However, the sequential fish results shown to the right indicate that chromosome 21 has one RUNX1 signal and that there are two on a marker chromosome. Given this fish result, we don't meet the definition for IMP21. Shown here is the microarray result for chromosome 21, which presents the characteristic pattern of uneven amplification and the distal deletion typical of IMP21. The region where the RUNX1 looks to be about three to four copies of IMP21, RUNX1 has typically been in the region of amplification, which is why this probe has worked so well. However, in this case, this was not detected by FISH and RUNX1 is not in the region of amplification. We went back and used a different set of probes targeting chromosome 21 that is known to be amplified to prove that in fact there is IMP21. This new set of probe did in fact provide evidence that there is an intrachromosomal amplification of chromosome 21 and that the marker chromosome is the derivative 21. The next case is of another eight-year-old female. In this karyogram, you can see the gains of chromosomes 13 and 21, loss of one chromosome five, and an additional marker chromosome. However, the sequential fish results shown to the right indicate that chromosome 21 has only two RUNX1 signals. The AD21 has also two RUNX1 signals, and there are three signals on the marker chromosome. Given this fish result, we don't meet the definition for IMP21. Chromosomal microarray revealed a copy state of five for RUNX1, but you will notice um, that we don't see the typical gains and losses that we would expect for IMP21. It is not as amplified. This case highlights those that are at risk of being misclassified because the gains and losses are not as obvious, but the copy state is truly at five. Mate pair sequencing on the sample indicated far fewer junctions. Remember that there was a loss of chromosome five and a marker chromosome on banded analysis and three RUNX1 signals on the marker chromosome. Mate pair sequencing does not show loss of an entire chromosome five and we have multiple junctions between chromosomes five and 21 implying that the marker chromosome is likely chromosome five. Based on the three cases I presented to you today and the other four typical cases, we, we atypical cases we reviewed that we didn't have time to show you, we have evidence that RUNX1 signals can appear on other chromosomes besides 21. This has been previously reported in the literature. However, to our knowledge, our study includes the largest number of atypical cases or cases that do not meet the current definition. At the beginning of the study, we hypothesized that the RUNX1 fish probe set will not characterize all IMP21 cases. We showed that about 21% of IMP21 cases from our lab during this time period were not captured by fish. 
We know that RUNX1 is not the target for IMP21, but rather it is included in the common region of amplification on chromosome 21. Although FISH analysis is an efficient and fast tool to detect a variety of biomarkers in a single experiment, we need to continue to reassess the sensitivity and specificity of the current probe sets as we learn more about the complex genetic profiles of these cancers. And lastly, I just want to briefly touch on the added benefit of using microarray for these patients, especially those that have IMP21, as that significantly changes their prognosis. I've shown you today that microarray can significantly enhance this genetic um, profile of these patients. So at what point do we need to say that no matter what, we're going to include microarray when a primary genetic abnormality is not identified by chromosome analysis in FISH, because we know this will have significant impacts on our patients. I will conclude the talk by reminding you of the main takeaway point, which is that RUNX1 signals can appear on other chromosomes. We have seen these additional signals on chromosomes 5, 10, 18, 20, 22, and X. If you have a scenario in which a patient, for example, has monosomy 21 or an abnormal chromosome 21 and a marker chromosome but no clear primary, you should be thinking about IMP21. Additionally, I showed a case in which RUNX1 was not in the region of amplification, and using a different probe set targeting the amplified region, we were able to identify IMP21. It would also be interesting to further assess the risk of developing IMP21 for those with other Robertsonian translocations besides the 1521 translocation. I also showed you a case in which there was modest amplification compared to a typical IMP21 case. This makes us question if there is a spectrum of ampli amplification and if this has any clinical significance. Lastly, as we think about these atypical cases of IMP21, we cannot help but wonder if we are missing some of these atypical cases in the not otherwise specified group. Not every case has microarray, and so we cannot be certain that we aren't missing IMP21. But this brings us back to reassessing the performance of the RUNX1 probe in identifying IMP21, because as the definition of it currently stands, we weren't able to identify all of these cases. There are many people to thank. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go through them all. Thank you for listening and be more than happy to take any questions.